something so good or so kind or perfect that we did, but you extended your grace and mercy to us, and you allowed us to assemble one more time. God, we say thank you. We had to say goodbye to many people this year, God, but you let us roll on to see another son. God, we say we thank you for this day. For God, this is a day that you are made. We rejoice. Our hearts are full of joy today. And we're glad and glad that we can come and lift the name of Jesus one more time. God, I thank you. I thank you for everyone who pressed their way out. There are some who would desire to be here, God, but they are unable to. I thank you for them because you said we can be blessed when we adhere and hearken to your commandments. God, we thank you. We thank you for the word that will come forth, God. We bind the hand of the enemy, even in the airways, that will cause this word not to go forth. And we loose the spirit of readiness that we will listen, that the seed will be planted in good ground. And then, God, it's up to you to send those to water that has, that has been planted, for you will get the increase. God, we thank you. I thank you for the man of God who will stand and break forth the bread of life that has been prepared for us. God, help us to digest it and then help us to put it into practice in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we ask that you be with those who are hospitalized, be with those who have a need that may even be unspoken. God, be with our pastor and his family, wherever they may be, continue to endow him with as we go forth in expectancy in a new year. God, have your way in our lives that you might be glorified and that someone in the we know might be saved. There are things, God, I forgot. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
When you get it, play it.
says, And it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken, I want you to, if you've got a Bible with you, or if you've got a piece of paper, write down hearken, and when you get through with this whole thing, you go back home and you look that up, all right? You'll spend some time with that word. If you'll hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, thy God, to observe, I want you to underline, observe, And the next one said, and do, oh, circle do, and do all his commandments which I have commanded thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And the second verse says, and all these blessings shall come on thee. Now, I want you to pay attention to that. All these blessings will come on thee. Don't y'all remember when Gabriel came down and talked to the little virgin girl there in Nazareth? And he said, And the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Huh? You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to go no way. You don't have to know no man. But the Holy Ghost will come upon thee. All right? All right? Yeah, that's what it says right here. And overtake thee. You can't run. You can't hide from it. Overtake thee. What's he talking about here? He's talking about blessings. Huh? Is he talking about this year? Not particularly. He's talking about next year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just talking about what God can do and what God will do when you do what you're supposed to do. Right? If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy choices. Is that what it says? That's what it says. Yeah, you got to do some things, and when you do some things, I believe that most of us folks will agree that this has been one stressful year. Oh, we got people not only near crazy, but real crazy, just because that COVID stuff done drove them crazy. And the government is trying to keep up, and everybody's throwing bricks at the government because they're trying to keep up, but they're lost too. Huh? Because we don't know how many COVIDs are going to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. This has been a stressful year. We've had fires and floods. We've had tornadoes. And we've had pandemics. And we've had COVIDs and deaths. We've had all kinds of vile stuff. But I believe that you would be remiss if you did not pay attention to the fact that while some folk were suffering, others in the same arena were being blessed. Can I get a witness? You see, God knows what he's doing. You've just got to put yourself under the right umbrella. That's what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. Now, 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 now. If you were honest with yourselves, then all of us would, would, would want our next year to be more blessed and glorious than this one. Is that all right? So, 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 if, 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 I come to you this morning as the old prophet Moses. And then, 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 then I must would say, uh, we, we, we need to march off into this uncharted territory. What are you talking about, preacher? We're going to march off as of next week into next year. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. And we are fixing to march off. Yes, my friends, the Lord, the Lord has already in his tender mercies provided for your success over the next 365 years. The Lord has already provided for your success over the next 52 weeks and over the next 12 months. So I better ask you again over here. Uh, are you ready? Remember that the choice is yours. Remember that the choice is yours. And remember that the choice is yours. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah, hallelujah. The choice is yours. The text says that about 3,500 years ago, Moses was already 120 years old. And the Bible says, the Bible says, he is almost at the end of his days. For he has lived a long time on planet Earth. 
He has lived 40 years as a prince in Egypt. And he has lived 40 years as a shepherd in Midian. And he has lived 40 years as a leader of Israel in the wilderness. And, and now he's standing over the banks of the Jordan, looking over at Canaan land. We now are standing on the banks of 2021, and we're looking across the Jordan at the new year. Can I get a witness? Yes, yes, yes. And, and he says to himself while he's standing there, like the old songwriter, on Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye at the Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. Am I right about that? So the Bible says that old man Moses gives his last address here. And he knows that he's fixing to go up Mount Nebo for the last time. And he, need, he needs to address the people because he's fixing to lay down and die. And, and Moses knows that uh, the mountains are going to be high when he's gone. And he knows that uh, the valleys are sometimes going to be low. And he knows that sometimes the sands are going to be hot. And even the wind will blow contrary. But Moses wants the people of Israel to know that the choice is theirs. Absolutely right. The choice is theirs. Now, 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 the old prophet says, I'm, I'm about to leave you now. And, and I'm going up the mountain for the last time. And so, and so, and so, I ought to tell you about your future when I'm gone. Ah, because your future will have some ups and some downs. And your future will have some twists and turns. And your future will even have some ins and outs. Ah, but I want you to remember that the choice is yours. Can I get a witness? Yes, my friends, the Lord ah, has promised ah, that if you do your part, he will do his. Hey, hey, hey. That's why the Bible says ah, God cannot lie. Am I right about it? And that's why Moses says in the text, if we want to be successful yeah, over in the next land, uh, as we look into our futures, we need to understand three things. We need to learn how to hearken. And what that really means is we need to listen to God's plan. Can I get a witness? Not your plan, but God's plan. And uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to observe. And what that means is I need to pay strict attention to God's plan. And the last thing I need to do is I need to do. Uh, I need to put into action God's plan. Hey, am I right about that? Now, not the first thing that we notice here. In the text is God has already, has already put his plan into motion. He's already made it clear that he's planned for your success. And that's why the Bible says in all things, uh, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Can I get a witness? Oh, you see, you see, you see, you can't put God's plan into action unless you know what God's plan is. You've got to first hear God's plan. You've got to first give some consideration to God's plan if you ever want to put it into action. And so many of us go into life and we try to do what we want to do. I want a new house. I want a new car. I'm sure somebody in Kentucky said just the other day, I want a new house, and now I got it, and it looks so good. And the tornado came through, and now they got splinters. Can I get a witness? But I got news for you. Somebody probably remember that there were two babies, 
And their mama thought so much of them that she decided to put them in the bathtub. And during the tornadoes, the bathtub lifted up and went up out of the house and floated across the field and came down. And when the rescuers came through, I, heard some, I believe I hear something. And somebody said, it sounds like a baby. Somebody said, I believe it's two babies. And they pulled them out, and there they were. If you want to do God's plan, you got to first listen to God's plan. Next thing, number two, you got to pay attention to God's plan. You got to observe God's plan. Am I right about that? You see, you see, you see, you see, it's one thing to hear the plan. But it's quite another thing. It's quite another thing uh, to understand the plan. Huh? And to really pay attention to the plan. Now, if you show sure enough want to execute God's plan, then then you need to spend a little time wrestling with God's plan. Somebody remember Jacob? Somebody remember how he wrestled with God all night? Am I right about it? And just so God could show him who was boss. And just before daybreak, God touched him in the socket of his hip. And every, every other step he took, the rest of his natural life was like that because you're not in charge, but God is. And don't you forget it. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody needs to understand that you got to struggle with God's strategy. You got to do it in worship. Oh, be careful, preacher. Somebody don't want to worship. You got to do it in Sunday school. Huh? Where you learn something, how to implement his plan in your life. You've got to do it. You've got to do it in Bible study. And only after you've done these things sufficiently, and after you've done all of these things and spent time in God's plan, and spent, paid attention to God's strategy, are you ready to move to the last step? The last step. What's the last step, brother preacher? Well, my brothers and sisters, Moses says only after we listen to God's plan, only after we pay attention to God's plan, only then can we do God's plan. Only then can we do God's plan. Yes, yes, only then can we put it into action. And I stop by to tell somebody today that you can have the best plan in the world. And, and you can have the best strategy in the universe. But until you put it into action, you ain't gonna never win the battle. Somebody ought to hear what I'm saying. I want, I want, I want a better youth church. But you ain't going to never get it until you step off in faith on God's plan. Not your plan. Not my plan. But God's plan. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you want a better church, step off on God's plan. Spend some time with him. And let him direct not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. It's not about me, and it's not about you. I don't care how long your mama been in this church. I don't care how long your papa was in this church. This is a new situation. This is a new creation. Day by day, this is a new creation. And what we need to do is look to the future and not spend time. I 
I'm, I'm, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna go sit down. I'm finna, I'm finna be embarrassed. I'm going to sit down. I know, I know we've seen some folk who sit around day after day resting on their derriere and expecting to be successful. Yeah, but oh, church, I, I've got news for you. I heard Moses say, if you want success over there in the promised land, if you want success over there in Canaan land, if you want success next year in your future, then you better obey God's word. Obey God's word. And then you better listen to God's plan. You better observe God's plan. You better do God's plan. Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, 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 oh. The choice is yours. I heard, I heard the text say, if we obey God's plan, uh, we will be set on a high place above all nations. Well, preacher, I don't understand what you're talking about. We're going to be set on a high place above all nations. Now, y'all remember James. That's the brother of Jesus. And one day he said this. He says, every good and every perfect gift comes from where? If I'm sitting at a high place, I'm first in the blessing line. If I'm sitting in a high place, hallelujah, that's what I'm talking about. So you don't have to worry about a thing. I'm going to put you in a high place. I'm going to put you in a special position. And while you sit there, while you sit there, every good gift will come your way. And every perfect gift will come your way. Because in him there is no variableness. What are you talking about there, preacher? He ain't wish you watch it like somebody. In him it is no variableness. A shadow of eternity. What I'm what you saying? I'm saying the same thing. God was this morning, he gonna be this evening, and the same thing he was this year, he'd be next year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same God. The same God who passes blessings out of this side. Passes COVID out of that side. The same God who lifts up babies on this side. And is dead from that side. The same God who makes the sun to shine. Make it rain on that side. The same. What's the difference, preacher? What makes the difference? Well, the difference is up to you. You can do what you want to. You can choose to believe or not. If you believe, we say, oh, I believe in the Lord. If we believe, we will step out of, we got people in the church, listen to my voice right now, somewhere out there on Facebook. I don't want to talk about nobody. <laughs> so we got somebody out there on Zoom, and they're probably listening. But listen, listen, I'm saying this. Do you believe? Now, when the church opened up, I came back. And I'm no better at taking care of myself than you. The reason I say this to where he wants me to be. And the Bible says he's going to take me to a high place. If I obey him, he will take me to a high place. And on that high place are nothing but blessings. Can I get a witness? On that high place is nothing but blessings. Now listen, I, I'm going to say that. But one of the things he says, I better leave this with you. Before I go back to my seat, I want you to remember that up there, every good gift comes. And you first don't lie. Up there, every perfect gift comes. And you first, I don't want to be down in the slop hole. I want to be up there where I 
can reach out and grab a blessing. Can I get a witness? First in line to grab a blessing. But I like the fat one right there. Grab that blessing. I like this beautiful one over here. I want to grab that blessing because I'm at the top of the heap. And God said he's passing out blessing. And look at here, look at here, look at here. If I turn my back and miss a blessing, uh, the Bible says it will overtake me. And the Bible says it, it will reach me wherever I happen to be. Can I get a witness? If I'm in the field, it'll reach me. If I'm in the city, it'll reach me. If, if I was in the body, it'll reach me. But if it's in the ground, it'll reach me. Am I right about it? And that's why I know that when the undertaker lay my body down, it ain't forever because the Bible says he will reach way down and pick me up. Am I right about it? And set my feet on solid ground. So if I'm in the earth, that's all right. But if I leave your children, that's all right. Because I serve a God that can reach way down and pick you up. Pick you up. Can he do it? Can he do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. The choice is yours. Thank you. The choice is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Choice is yours. You can choose to obey and be rewarded. We're talking big time. I know big time because he has rewarded me big time. And I have not always been faithful. Huh? Even when I'm somewhat faithful. Hey! <laughs> Even when I try to be faithful. His goodness and his mercy. I was talking with somebody today. Sometimes we get so big headed we can't see who God is. But God know how to make your head microscopic. God can shrink your brain. He can make you so small till you cry out for God. And forever. But it takes my great grandfather in slavery time. Huh? He's still working it. And I don't care what your race happens to be. And I don't care how many other races you try to keep down. God will lift us up. He will lift us up. Hallelujah. I want to say to those people who are in the virtual sphere that you might have heard us today and wondering how you can safely go into next year. You might not have been exposed to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to introduce you if you want to go. Now listen, 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 listen. Let me just make this clear. I don't know whether you've heard the news lately, but we got crazy people. Um, we got people buying their kids guns, sending them off to school, and, and the teachers saying, these kids are too crazy to be in school. Y'all need to take them home. Is the way you're taking those kids don't we let them stay in school and shoot people. And your kids and your grandkids kids your great grandkids are out there negotiating these situations. And if you think buying them a gun is going to solve it, you're an idiot. I'm sorry, you're just an idiot. Okay? Yeah. Buying all the guns in the world is not going to save your grandkids. Huh? But the only thing that's going to save them is the spirit of the living God. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying God knew what your kid was going to do before your kid ever did it. And God knows how to keep my kids and my grandkids safe, huh? Before we ever had them. And they can walk in the same path that you did and miss the bullet. And you can come along and get shot in the brain. 
what I'm saying, what I'm saying, I'm saying you better lean and depend on somebody who's dependable. So if you're going into the new year and you want to be safe and you want your family to be safe, I strongly suggest that you put your hand, the old folks used to say, in the wine chain. What does that really mean? That means you've got to give your life to Christ. That's what that really means. Give your life to Christ. All right? So if you're out there and you don't know what to do and which way to turn, what you should do is call. If you're not here, we are online, and you can call. You can call on your silly phone, on your little silly. <laughs> or you can call on your landline. Or on the other zero nine two. Five two two five two. All right, let's say that again. Nine eight zero nine two five two two five two. Call him anytime, and he will straighten you up as to what you need to do. Be saved, and if he can't do it, he knows who to turn to, so he'll direct you to the right place. Is that all right? Some folks say, but that sounds like anybody in your church. That's brother who. That's not like anybody. I want to talk to the pastor. <laughs> Don't call me. I'm the assistant. <laughs> call, <laughs> call pastor. All right. The pastor is Dr. Daryl A. Jackson. All right. And you can write him at 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. And you got to have that zip. That's 28054. 4864. Six two two two. All right. Extension, extension. Are you be directed. You have to try to remember it. It'll tell you when you're on the phone. Extension two zero eight. All right. Those are some things I think are important. All right. So in other words, get your life right, and the rest will be history. Get your. I saw this thing on TV just this morning, and some guy who had been homeless last year was homeless, and he was under a tree and out there where people do it with the homeless stuff. And didn't have nowhere to go. I just told him how cold and how lonesome it was. And he has a kid. His kid's about like, I guess maybe three years old, a little girl. And he just moved into a dim, as it were, to be better. And he was so happy of all the people in the world was helping him to do the things that required, that required to be successful. Amen? And what I'm trying to tell somebody in here, and I certainly want all of the young people, because the young people don't know these things, I don't care. If you got money or you don't, if you got a dream, somebody out there is willing to pay for it. All right? Listen to me now, listen to me. Somebody out there is willing to pay for your dream. And you say, well, I better not dream to be this. I better try to dream for something daddy and mama can. No, don't do that. Don't do that. You say yourself short. God can give you whatever he wants to. Am I right about that? Hey, God can, God can reach across the tracks. And bless you. He will overtake you with a blessing. That's what it is. He will come upon you with a blessing. Don't 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 forget it. Don't forget it. All right. Now, if there's anybody in this church who is not saved, I suggest to you that before next year come, because we don't know what I'm trying to do is going to hit next. And y'all know we up here in Hurricane Alley, and if things will come through here and do a job. And if y'all think just because y'all at the foot of the mountain. What was that? Was what, what, my, what, what big storm was that that came through here? Right to the foot of the mountain. Tore up everything. Right here in this city. Hugo, there you go. I started saying Hugo, but I didn't want to step on, you know, show my ignorance. But it was Hugo, because I wasn't staying here then. I was staying over there, and it finally missed me. It came right here and got y'all. It said, I think some sinners over there, too. So what I'm saying is, if you want to save yourself, put yourself in God's hand. That's the only thing I'm saying, okay? So if you're here, and you want to be saved. I can't save you, but I know who can. And, and I can vouch for the fact that he can save me because he saved me. All right? And he's shown up saved me. But now listen, when I joined the church, I wasn't shown up saved. I joined the church at 10 years old in Burke County, Waynesburg, Georgia, okay? And I was saved at 45. But he did protect me. And through many dangers, toils, and snares. Until he saved me. All right? All right, if everybody's happy with where they are, then I can ask you if you.
you want to make a contribution to this church and you're out there somewhere. <laughs> oh, when I was a kid, we didn't have nothing but radio. We didn't have nothing but In Radio Land, <laughs> you're out there somewhere in the virtual universe. You might want to make a contribution. All right? Somebody might have said something to help you. You can give by Givelify. You can give by PayPal. And the reason I stress Givelify because I give by Givelify. And I was on my, I got up this morning and I had forgotten I had to pay my tithes today. And I said to him, I said, Bill, and he said, yeah, you got to pay your tithes today. I said, when you went to church? And I said, in a few minutes, by like three. He said, well, you can pay it now. Okay. Did it, did it, did Boom. Thank you. St. Say, say Charles appreciates you. But if you're not going to do that, and you have some money in your pocket, you can always stop by the church. And you can always give, because there's always somebody here on Sunday mornings at 10, or a few minutes till 10, okay? And they always hear a few minutes after 10, too. I mean, after 11, so you can stop by here and do that. Or you might want to stop by the office sometimes, okay? All right, you might see Pastor Steve out there, and you might see the secretary out there. They give to the secretary, that's like giving the best, I'm sure. All right? I vouch for her, all right? There you go. All right, so I just want you to know that. Now, we are ready to say we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Now, next week, of course, will be the new year. I'm praying that you pray it up because I want you to understand the gravity of the situation. There is somebody that can hear my voice today, will not hear it. You want to say, I want to be on the right side, and I want to be on the side where the sheep are, and not the goats. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? All right. Okay. That's it. That's it. I'll see you next week.